cars that we have now are, you know, they're heavy, they're, you know, not very efficient, uh, they're hard to park in the city. Uh, you know, this kind of solves for all those problems and it, also it's a safe and really incredibly sexy and fun driving experience. Uh, so we think that's a winner, uh, you know, on all, on all fronts. We'll let you be the judge of if it's sexy, but Dan and Kim insists I won't have any problems taking it for a spin after engineers run through some final tests. I'm going to hold him to that claim. He believes we could fit twice as many cars onto the streets and into parking spaces if they were half the size. And his solution is a two-wheeled, two-seater vehicle. But what sets it apart from motorbikes is its stability. Well, you know, the biggest problem with two-wheeled vehicles um, is that they're inherently not very stable. <laughs> Point proven. By using two gyroscopes spinning under the seat, the company claims this new vehicle can keep itself upright like a child's spinning top. And having two of them spinning in opposite directions should mean that any unwanted forces can be balanced out. We've seen that in the workshop. Now, in this prototype, they're on the road. Yeah, I mean, it's bouncing right now. Uh, you See know, that sound we can hear is the gyros running underneath? Exactly. Spinning the spinning at, at like 6,000 RPMs. It's about, a, in maximum, it's going to be around 6,000 foot-pounds of torque. It's an ungodly amount of torque. Uh, um, but that's enough to keep this vehicle upright? Oh yeah, that's plenty. That's enough uh, for like a Ford F-150 to drive into the vehicle. So a big pickup truck. Yeah, sideways. This, side. uh, this is the, uh, the, the drivetrain. Uh, it's got a big motor. It's a huge uh, improvement. It's about 100, it's capable of 100 miles an hour top speed. Uh, we have a whole electrical system that's going to get shrunk down to about the size of a shoebox. Because the second seat, of course, is planned to go here. This eventually. is where you bring your date or, uh, you know, your children. <laughs> um, and then moving forward, we have landing gear. So this is something that, uh, you know, touches down. You're able to, uh, you know, basically uh, get out of the vehicle and let it come, to, let, let it cut to rest. When you park. Yeah, when you down, park for parking. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, when you look at 0 60 at about, uh, you know, five to six seconds. Um, and, uh, you know, airbags, seatbelts, steel reinforced doors. Uh, it's going to have a body in the end, so, but this is our Wright Brothers flyer. Uh, this is our version of the full control system that enables this platform to drive. But the very early version. Well, the proof is in the driving, so Absolutely. I guess we should uh, see it in action. Yeah. This is the first time they've let a reporter behind the wheel, and I'm under orders to behave. Controls are fairly simple, particularly at this stage. There are two pedals, stop and go, and a steering wheel. The eventual goal is to have a more high-tech touchscreen with the type of phone integration that modern drivers expect. The roll cage is aluminium, and at the moment, this is all the company will tease us with about what the final body will look like. But they do say they're getting input from some big-name car designers. My restricted drive has shown me that the technology does work, but that it is going to need a lot more time and money for development. But this small company is convinced it does have the big idea needed to tempt us from four wheels to two. This is a one-of-a-kind prototype, incredibly expensive, difficult to replace vehicle. So I'm not gonna drive it any faster than that. But even at those speeds, you can begin to feel the potential of this sort of technology. 